In this lesson, we will introduce the passive sign convention, which is a method by which we compute uh, electric power unambiguously. So just as a quick review, remember that the definition of power is power is the rate at which energy is generated or expended or really you know we can't energy can't be created or destroyed so really what we're doing in power is typically what we do is we're changing the energy from one form into another so we say we're generating the energy that means we're creating you know moving energy into an electrical form or we say we're expending energy expending power that means we're usually converting the electrical energy into some other form so when we say generated or expended we're not creating or destroying energy because you can't do that conservation of energy what we mean is we're usually transferring it from one form to another. But remember that power is the rate at which this energy is being moved around, uh, transferred from one form to another, generated or expended in our, in, our, our note, in our vernacular that we've been using. So that's the definition of power. But then recall that current is dq dt and remember voltage was dw dq and so if you take those together you can see that applying the chain rule to the definition of power inserting the definition of current and voltage power is dw dt but that can be written as dw dq times dq dt and we see power electrical power electrical power is the product of voltage and current. Of course power is dw dt but electrical power can also be written as V times I. So that's great because now we have a way to represent the electrical power in terms of electrical quantities like voltage and current but a problem has uh, arises and that is because remember that our voltages and currents are a uh, vector quantities that is remember voltages have you know there's a voltage and all voltages have two names you can flip the polarity markings around and you have a different name for the same voltage the voltage didn't change just what you're how you're calling it has changed likewise current can be written two different ways all currents have all currents have two names you can flip the arrow around and uh, you have a new name for the current but the current has not changed of course the difference between those when you flip voltages and currents around is the sign the SIG and the sign of the voltage and the currents will change well the problem arises because if you look at electrical power is the product of V times I well we just said that the V itself could have either a positive sign or a negative sign depending on how we've defined the polarity markings the current could have a positive sign or a negative sign depending on which way the arrow is pointing so what you have is if electrical power is V times I and voltage and current both have two different representations that differ in their signs then the sign the SIG and the sign of electrical power will become ambiguous uh, is it plus times plus plus times minus minus times plus minus times there are four different ways to calculate an electrical power because V and I both have two representations so there's a confusion there so to solve that we don't need a new law we just need to all agree that we're going to calculate it the same way and that is what the passive sign convention is. The passive sign convention is simply an agreement, a convention, uh, an understanding that we've all as electrical and computer engineers have come together and said this is how we're going to compute electrical power. So it's simply an agreement and that allows us to all calculate electrical powers using these V's and I's which have multiple representations and we'll all end up with the same number when we're done. So the passive sign convention is an exceedingly important concept that goes along with our definitions uh, of you know charge, current, and voltage, energy, and power, and then the laws, the Kirchhoff laws we've been learning. Passive sign convention is a very important part because it, what, uh, it's what allows us to all end up with the same numbers when we do our calculations. So the passive sign convention. So there's some key words in the passive sign convention that I have made sure I highlighted. So you need to memorize the mass passive sign convention, but the most important words are highlighted. So when the current is directed into the positive terminal of a voltage then the power absorbed is going to be the algebraic product of V and I. Well, We saw of course that by doing the chain rule that power is V 
times i. Notice the passive sign convention tells us how to compute the power absorbed. So we're computing the powers absorbed of the pow passive sign convention. The passive sign convention tells us the power absorbed is v times i, but which i and which v? Well, most specifically, the passive sign convention says that we need to have the current we have a current and it must be directed into the positive terminal of the voltage. So this particular circuit element has a voltage and has a current and we are looking for the current which is directed into the positive terminal. So this particular diagram down here is what we always need to have when we're calculating the passive sign convention. Passive sign convention says one last time when the current is directed into the positive terminal then the power absorbed is going to be V times I. So let's just take those and do an example. So the first example we're going to do is uh, here we have a circuit element it has a 5 volt uh, voltage across it. The the voltage is 5 volts plus to minus and then there is a current moving in this direction which is 3 amperes. So we're interested in computing the power absorbed by the circuit element. So the passive sign convention when the current is directed into the positive terminal the power absorbed is the product of V times I so we are ready to go. So we're looking for the power absorbed. The power absorbed is when the current and what's the current? It's the current must be directed into into the positive terminal and this current is directed into the positive terminal. What is that current? It's 3 amperes since it is directed into the positive terminal, let's just take the voltage. What is the voltage of that positive terminal? Well, it is a positive 5 volts. And so the power absorbed for this particular circuit element is going to be 3 amperes times 5 volts, and that is going to be a positive, a positive, we'll put that there to be emphatic, positive 15 watts. It's a positive power absorbed, which means the circuit element is indeed absorbing power. So our next example, example number two, we have a circuit element and it has a voltage across it. The voltage is negative 5 volts plus with respect to the left hand side and then we have a current moving in this direction of 3 amperes. So we're looking to find the power absorbed and to find the power absorbed we need to have the current directed into the positive terminal. Well in this particular case the current is being directed into the negative terminal. So we need to find the current moving in this direction. Well that's relatively to do because we know from KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, that if the current is moving this way, if we have three amperes moving in this direction, where does where do these three coulombs per second go? Well they must travel through the circuit element and go out this direction. The circuit element cannot absorb or destroy these charges. It must pass through it. So we know we have a current going in this direction of three amperes. Well the current moving to the right is simply going to be the negative of the current moving to the left. So the current moving to the left must be a negative three amperes and we get that from KCL. So now we do have the current directed into the positive terminal. So we can find the power absorbed of the circuit element. The power absorbed of the circuit element is we have a current directed into the positive terminal. What is that current? Well it's negative 3 amperes. That's the current that's being directed into the positive terminal. And what is the voltage of that positive terminal? Well in this case the voltage plus on the right uh, minus on the left is negative 5 volts and the power absorbed by this circuit element is going to be negative 3 amperes times negative 5 volts that's going to be positive 15 watts. So in this particular case this circuit element is absorbing 15 watts, a positive 15 watts. It truly is absorbing the power. So the next example we have a circuit element and this is the case where we have 5 volts plus to minus and then we have a current going in this direction 
of a positive 3 amperes. And the question is, what is the power absorbed? To find the power absorbed once again, you need to have the current directed into the positive terminal. I am looking for the current which is going in this direction. That's the current directed into the positive terminal. Well, how do I get that value? Well, I know the current here is 3 amperes, and where did that current come from? Well, KCL tells me that current must have come in this direction, flowing from the left to the right. Therefore, KCL tells me this has to be a positive 3 amperes. So what is the power absorbed by the circuit element? Well, the power absorbed is found when the current is directed into the positive terminal. What is the current directed into the positive terminal? It is 3 amperes. And what is the voltage of that positive terminal? In this case, it is a positive 5 volts. So the power absorbed by this circuit element is again going to be a positive 15 watts. And the final example we have this scenario where we have a voltage plus to minus of negative 5 volts. The current flows in this direction, positive 3 amperes, and we're looking for the power absorbed by this circuit element. So in this case, we can see we need to have the power absorbed is the, when the current is directed into the positive terminal. So I'm looking for the current to be directed in this direction to the left to be directed into the positive terminal. Well, how do I find that red current? Well, it's simply the other name for the 3 amp current given on the diagram. And so if I am looking for the red current, the red current is going to be negative 3 amperes. That's the other name for the given current. And now we have the current directed into the positive terminal. And so we can find the power absorbed. The power absorbed in this scenario is going to be the current is directed into the positive terminal. And so that current is a negative 3 amperes. What is that voltage it's being directed into? Well, it's negative 5 volts in this case. And we see that the power absorbed is, again, a positive 15 watts. Now, if you've been very astute as we've been doing these examples, we did four examples here at the Passive Sign Convention. We ended up with the same answer each time, and that is because that's, that's not by accident. These four examples are the four different ways that you can write a circuit element with its two representations of current and two representations of voltage. So these are the four different possible ways we could have described the voltage, current, and power of this exact same circuit element. All four of these examples are literally the exact same problem. It's just using the different names of V and I. So the passive sign convention will tell you how to find the power absorbed. The power absorbed is found by V times I when the current is directed into the positive terminal. And that gives you the power absorbed. So the question may come to you and well, Dr. Bruce, you didn't say, well, how do you find the power generated? Well, we find the power absorbed. The passive sign convention tells us how to do that. If someone is interested in what kind of power is being generated by a particular circuit element, it is simply going to be the negative of the power absorbed. So the examples we did in this case, we're finding the power is absorbed, and they're all a positive 15 watts. If someone had asked me what will are the power generated in these examples, that would just be the negative of these, and that would be negative 15 watts. So always compute the power absorbed because the passive sign convention tells you how to do the compute the power absorbed. And if you need the power generated, just simply take the negative of that.